First of all, welcome and thank you for joining. My name is Nicholas Burial and I am head of the 3D visualization department here at CG Spectrum. And the idea with this AMA is to, first of all, for me to talk a little bit about 3D visualization and our courses that we're promoting for 3D visualization, as well as giving you guys a chance to ask a bit about um, what exactly it is that we're offering and some of the things that we might not be, um, might not have covered already. And yeah, just generally getting to know some of you guys and seeing if this isn't something for you. So, like I said, my name is Nicholas Burial and I am the department head of the 3D visualization um, department. I have roughly 10 plus years of experience teaching visualization in general. I did this, uh, I started at a different school, obviously. Um, this school was awarded best archivist school in the world multiple years in a row. Um, Besides that, I've been running my own creative studio for about 13 years. Here, I've been doing everything from visualization, which was the main area, but I've also actually been working as a, a photographer, a videographer. I even did DTP work sometimes, and motion graphics was a big part of it as well, actually. So it's, I've been, you know, I've been around doing all sorts of weird things and now I'm kind of trying to use all of these things to put it into a good use for creating these courses together with all of our amazing mentors, of course. Uh, I'm also a Chaos Certified V-Ray instructor. Um, there's not actually that many of us left, I think, because I think Chaos stopped doing these certifications, uh, which is obviously a bit of a shame, but this is more or less just a way of, you know, for you guys to know that, you know, we know what we're talking about. Um, we actually have a really good relationship with Chaos as well uh, here at CG Spectrum and have invited them to be part of our general, um, like our curriculum development and all of these things and want to make sure that the things that we teach you are the most updated and current information possible even i've even been you know a beta tester uh, for chaos uh, on v-ray when before v-ray 6 came out as well um, just to get a head, a head start on you know what kind of new tools are we getting what can we use these for and all of these things i've also been a co-host and speaker for 24 hours of chaos and one of their shows called zero to hero uh, I see that Nikas is in the chat as well. Uh, it's a great friend of ours, uh, of mine as well, uh, especially, and been on the uh, Chaos Campus Facebook group, helping there and joining their amazing, Nikas' amazing um, live sessions there as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. All right, CG Spectrum. So who are we? We might you might know uh, not know us. Um, we're a global top ranked online training provider offering specialized programs in animation, digital painting, game development, three D modeling, VFX, virtual production, and of course three D visualization. Now, uh, we educate creators through personalized mentorships from industry experts. Uh, we have a hundred over one hundred and seventy film and game industry mentors. Obviously, this also covers. Uh, visualization mentors now as well. Uh, we have about 80% job success rate uh, of our advanced students. So the students that take our advanced courses, they're not actually called advanced courses anymore, or some of them are, but the visualization courses are taking a new form, which uh, everything will be updated into eventually. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit, a little bit later. Uh, we have students across 90 different countries. We provide career development services generally, and we have a very vibrant online community, which is actually one of the things that I've wanted to mention to you guys quite a lot and, and share or, or <laughs> get some attention to with the story of who is CG Spectrum and what is it that we offer, because I think that's one of the unique things of CG Spectrum. Uh, we use Slack as the main online platform for our students and our mentors and uh, head of departments and all of these guys. And we have, I think last time I checked, more than 4,000 alumni in our general chat, for example, across multiple industries and people are talking and helping each other. Um, so you don't even, 
it's not just about who you get to go to a course with in a class. It's also about, you know, all the other industries that are part of all of these things. Um, it's about, you know, if people ask questions to each other, students, they ask questions or have, they seek feedback for some of their new pieces for their portfolio or whatever, you know, everybody can get a chance to, to, you know, um, put in their 50 cents worth of thoughts, um, towards a student and, and help them out really getting different perspectives. So, you know, one day you might get a, you know, some feedback or a perspective from a fellow student who's doing concept art. And the, uh, the next day you might get some, you know, a different kind of student who's done, uh, like VFX or Houdini artist or something like that. So you, you really do get a great community of people who all share the same, you know, general, general interest for 3D and not even just 3D, but creative processes um, on a computer, I guess, is, is the main thing of it. And I bet that most of us are all like game uh, geeks and, and nerds with movies as well and so on. So there's always someone to vibe with. Uh, to go into a huddle and, you know, just talk and maybe just have someone to talk to while working on a portfolio piece or a lesson or whatever it might be. So it's really great. Um, we're obviously uh, also very certified as a school. We're uh, certified by uh, Unreal uh, in Epic. So we're an academic partner with Unreal. Um, we're a certified school by Side Effects Houdini. We're authorized training center at ATC Toon Boom. We're also a chaos academic partner, um, which is a new thing that came about as we started developing our uh, visualization courses. So this is something that I've brought into the, um, the CT Spectrum family as well. And it's something that we hope to really utilize a lot to make sure that we create the absolute best um, type of education for you guys, basically, and for anyone else who might be interested. So in this live uh, AMA session, you will understand what 3D visualization is. Uh, you will learn what software 3D visualization artists commonly use. Um, you will hear about what it's like to be a 3D visualization artist. You will learn uh, the different applications of 3D visualization as an art. Um, find out about the next steps in our uh, learning journey. And you will also have a chance to ask um, me, in this case, an industry pro about 3D visualization. You will, I will have time for the uh, AMA part of this session uh, when I'm done with the presentation. So we will end on the AMA, but please do use the uh, questions, the Q&A section in Zoom, the function there. Go ask your questions there and I, they will be on a list for me. That will make it a lot easier for me to make sure that I get through all of your questions and that I can answer them. Um, so yeah, please use the Zoom Q&A. Um, and not just the uh, webinar chat itself. You're obviously more than welcome to um, talk to each other in the chat as well um, and say hi. But if you have any relevant questions and so on, please ask them in the uh, Q&A section of Zoom. Cool. So let's start with the easy question, I guess. What is 3D visualization? It's a big mouthful. Um, Visualization, as it says here on the page, is the art of generating a realistic 3D renders, um, which is images of um, that could be buildings, interiors, exteriors, landscapes, products, uh, and other designed environments using uh, specialized software. It's the process that, uh, that are bridging the gap between the world of architecture and design and the world of interactive 3D modeling. It's commonly used in industries like architecture, engineering, marketing, and manufacturing, but is not necessarily limited to those things. So visualization in itself, it kind of, it's in the name, right? So it's, it's about visualizing a, usually some type of product or concept and help show or explain how something works or how something is supposed to look like at the end result, usually, not necessarily. Um, this could be used most commonly, I think, for something like marketing purposes. So if you have any type of company who might have a product and they wish to um, go into, like they, they wish to do product development and instead of just doing a buttload of... Um, prototyping on this product which will take forever and be very 
it'll cost a lot of money to do. Uh, you can use visualization artists to get a better idea of what the end result will look like um, without having to do all the prototypes in between. Obviously, at some point, you probably should do prototyping and so on as well. Um, but it'll help to show the actual end result without just being necessarily sketches. Uh, we see this used by architectures a lot for um, competitions, like architecture competitions, uh, competitions where they do like amazing buildings and figure out what this new big skyscraper should look like in the middle of downtown or whatever. Um, and and hopefully that'll be enough to explain to whoever is going to invest into it that they should invest into it, right? Instead of just looking at blueprints and technical drawings and, and, and whatnot. The same could be done for the smallest of products like mobile phones or headphones, or it doesn't even have to be tech, right? You see it a lot in jewelry as well and like watches and automotive and cars and everything. So it's basically there's room for visualization artists in almost every industry. That's the beauty of it. There's like, it's almost just a, a matter of your own creative thought process as to where you might fit in in a team and could help a marketing team, for example, or even internally could use to, you know, it doesn't have to be used for commercial. It could be used for um, by internal documentation uh, amongst, you know, the company itself. There's so many uses for this. We offer, um, we've divided our visualization courses into multiple industries. Um, in this case, we're focusing currently on architectural visualization. That's the first one. Um, skills being about composition, color, lighting, uh, to some degree modeling, but actually not as much as you might think. Texturing, animation, real-time rendering, um, all of these things are the primary, you know, what I consider the primary skills of visualization, of architectural visualization. It's not necessarily the only skills, and this can change quite a lot depending on where you end up working. Uh, examples of industries that work with uh, architectural um, visualization would be companies like IKEA in general architecture and construction and furniture design. You can spot a lot of different companies that uses Archivis that don't just, not just companies that, you know, builds buildings or architects for that matter. It can be used for interior design a lot, for example, to explain how a product works. So it could be a company that deals with lamps, for example, or sofas or chairs or designs in general for interior design. Um, and they would might need, you know, interior visualization to showcase how it works in a room. Um, or it could be out in a city and be exterior instead. Um, in Scandinavia, we see quite a lot of archivists being interior specified. Um, and I feel like in outside of Scandinavia, so Europe and the rest of the world for that matter as well, we see more commonly visualization or activists being used as exterior. But it's definitely, this is changing all the time. There's more and more companies that is, you know, noticing the use, uh, the, the great use of, of activists and visualization in general. So you will see this change over time as well. We're seeing a a huge bump in, in interest in visualization as a general, which is also why we're now offering these things because the world will be needing more visualization artists. So it just makes sense for us to help, you know, uh, educate, educate people to get into visualization. The next uh, big thing for us will be product visualization. Um, again, the skills that I've, uh, that I've written here are all, they all sound kind of the same, but this can be, Again, com uh, composition and lighting and modeling, texturing, animation, even motion design and print setup, and also real-time rendering. Um, industry examples for product visualization could be something like automotive industry and product manufacturers and furniture design. So a lot of these have overlap with each other. Um, so Aquis, uh, for example, and product visualization, it's it can be kind of hard to define when is it what, right? If you think about on a, a company like IKEA, they might have a sofa that they need visualized. So if it's just a sofa, we would technically consider that a product visualization. But if you then need to visualize the sofa in a context in a room, then all of a sudden it's interior visualization, which is Arquis. So again, 
we tr we've tried to divide, divide it up into industries, but in many cases, a lot of people that I know that works in this, this industry, they end up doing a bit of everything, basically. Um, so a lot of the skills are the same, but there are some things that we feel like that we can specialize into. So we've divided them into specializations like ArcVis and now ProductVis as well. Um, so yeah, ProductVis would also have a bigger emphasis for us, at least on the automotive industry, uh, which is mentioned here as well on the page. Uh, so we will be working more towards that as well, but not entirely and not only automotive, but that will definitely be part of it. Then we have industrial visualization, which is, I think for most people, a bit more of a new word maybe. Um, the idea with industrial visualization is instead of just being focused around product, which is technically true still, it's, it's actually a part of product visualization. But for me, industrial visualization has a unique style and a unique look to it usually. It's not necessarily as important that it looks 100% realistic in the same sense that product and Aquis usually does. Not always, but usually. Um, so for me, industrial mechanics like companies like Boeing and Siemens, for example, and automotive industries as well, um, like we talked about earlier, and product manufacturing as well, actually. So you can see the picture of this lamp down here in the bottom right, which is a render I did for a company quite a while ago, which is basically they do technical products of lamps, in this case, LED-based lamps for, uh, I think, shows, basically. So concerts and also sometimes for architectural purposes these need you know visualization in order to explain what they do and what they can um, but they're not necessarily you know a very shiny object that looks like it's um part of like a iphone commercial or something like that if you get what i mean right it's more you know you would assume it's more brushed steel it's more explanatory uh visualization rather than just um marketing focused visualizations it's usually it could be visualizations done for maintenance guides for example online or even uh real-time based maintenance guides for companies a lot of companies are looking into that as well so we obviously want to be part of that and help uh specialize some of our students who wish to go in that route and help them give them the tools to do really awesome visualizations within uh, game engines or real-time engines in general and do um, technical drawings basically in but you know polished technical drawings we also have digital fashion as part of our focus on visualization or in the visualization department i will have to mention though that digital fashion is currently not something that we are active we're looking into developing it uh, but I can't promise you when this will come or how or anything, basically. Uh, so I'll keep it a little bit vague, uh, but it's definitely on our radar. And it's definitely something that we do wish to um, in the future to offer you guys, but we currently cannot offer it. Um, but we are working on this as well. Uh, fashion industry will cover a lot of different things. This can be uh, video games and fashion itself, but it can also be for visual effects and for architecture and construction and furniture design. Again, you can hear all the overlap here, right? Um, but yeah, you know, imagine game characters that need clothing. In a, imagine a you know a new Marvel film where you have characters again. They need some sort of garments and clothing and fashion related stuff. But it could also be for video games with cosmetics with you know. You, we all, a lot of you have probably played games where you can buy microtransactions worth of cosmetics for characters. And even if you can't buy it, I mean, there's still characters that needs to have fashion or garments of some sort. Um, we will make some of it into our ArcVis courses as well, of course, because, you know, we need to be able to do um, uh, covers for uh, curtains and all of these great things and, you know, all of that. So we have, you know, we do have a focus on it for, as part of the other uh, industries, but we will definitely also be looking into offering it as a standalone thing um, where we will teach you pattern making as well as um, the the actual 3D side of it and the from 2D to 3D side for people who are already in the fashion industry but want to go into the digital fashion part of it. Uh, so digital twinning and all of those things as well is definitely going to be a part of it. Um, 
So the 3D visualization software, this list could actually have been a lot longer uh, than it is. I've kept it very short, and this is just to give you a, you guys an idea of, of some of the focuses. Uh, so these are some of the main programs in terms of 3ds Max as the main DCC engine. Uh, V-Ray as well, of course. Uh, Unreal Engine for visualization. We think Unreal Engine is really cool and can do a lot of great things. We're seeing more and more great and very realistic things getting offered with uh, Unreal Engine. So we obviously want to be a big part of that as well. And Photoshop is usually used quite a lot for uh, post-processing of your images, but also texture work or whatever it might be. Um, softwares that isn't mentioned on this list could be also Substance, uh, the Substance programs from Adobe. So Substance Designer and Substance Painter is definitely part of our courses as well. There's a lot of plugins as well that goes into this. Uh, we're looking a lot into plug plugins for 3ds Max, like Sinai software. Uh, Tyflow is a part of it as well, to some degree. Uh, Chaos Phoenix will probably be part of some of it as well, even though that's usually like fire and water and whatever. But simulations is definitely part of some of these things as well, especially I feel for industrial visualization where you might need to simulate how a machine covers a chocolate bar with chocolate or whatever it might be, right? So we need to be able to, to do some of these things as well. So this list is definitely not complete at all. And it's subject to change all the time because the industry changes and we keep talking to the industry. So we want to make sure that whatever we teach you guys, the students, um, or even the companies who want to be upskilled, we definitely want to make sure that we are staying ahead of the curve and, and teaching the most current possible software and techniques and skills that are needed. Working as a 3D visualization artist. So I have a few bullet points here. I just want to you know, glance over some of it, I guess. Um, but to give you guys an idea of how is it to be working as a 3D visualization artist, and I've already spotted a, spotted a few of you guys who I know work in visualization uh, on your day-to-day -day lives. So some of you can probably uh, add to this as well. But for me, being a 3D visualization artist in general is challenging in a great way. So you get to be challenged every day or at least most every day. Obviously, all of these are most common bullet points and not necessarily something that you will see in every company and every employment. Um, but this is you know, a general thing for me. Um, it's You're very much a generalist working as a visualization artist. So you're expected to be able to do a lot of different things in, um, in 3D in general. It's not just about being able to do good lighting and good, good composition, but you also need to all of a sudden look into crowd uh, simulations as well as how to do fire or snow or uh, water stuff. Or all of a sudden you need to do Unreal and real-time stuff. And maybe you need to do... Uh, terrain stuff with Gaia or whatever it might be. So there's very much a generalist approach to this, which I think is great compared to VFX and game um, game industries is a lot more specialized, a lot more focused into um, individual skills where here you need to be pretty good at everything, basically. Um, so that's also the challenge when we are developing these courses is to, you know, we need to get through all of it, basically. So it's definitely, um, and that makes it fun, right? So that's, you know, there's a lot of different things you could get to, to, to look at. You get usually to, you start with a project and you follow that project from start to finish, usually. Because the pipeline for most visualization artists is bound to one to two people. Um, most common projects are not that huge in terms of the project itself. So it's not uncommon for one person to be the one that, gets the brief from the client and then basically delivers all of it all the way until the job is done. And that person has been involved in every single process of that image or images to be created or animation for that matter. Um, whereas in VFX, you might be a modeler of some sort. So you will be, you know, modeling forever basically or texturing as your primary thing, right? Where here you get to do all of it. That also, you know, leaves it to be a very creative stuff. Um, there's, you know, you need to find solutions to something you might not have done before. And you want to obviously 
try and and be be part of all of these things and learn as you do, um, which also helps community. Um, I can vouch for the visualization community being a like the most interesting community to be part of, if you ask me. Generally, I would say for creative communities have are very rewarding for all of us. Um, I feel like, but you know, just looking at the chat here, I can see Nikos is here, and 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 that's amazing to me because Nikos actually has his own courses, right? He sells courses online, and you know, it's not something that we don't care actually. As in, I support what he does, and I know that he support what I does, right? What I do, right? So we we are here as a community. We're all sharing one another in our experience. So if I ever had a problem with uh, a client or dealing with something like a technical thing, I know that I could write to any of my buddies within visualization and they would happily help if, as long as they have the time for it. Uh, and they will take time for it as well. So the community is really a great way, um, a great benefit of the whole visualization uh, community itself. And that also obviously makes it rewarding. Part of the rewarding thing and, and what I wanted to talk about with the rewarding part of this is actually one of the most common things that is thought of when you think about the um, VFX and game communities and, and work within VFX and games is that you get to see your own name on IMDb. Um, and that's one of the things that we don't have in visualization. We don't really have these, you know, rock star statuses the same way that vfx might do because you can't look up your own name and say oh i've been part of this hollywood movie or whatever right but instead one of the things that i think people might forget is just because it's not as common thought of is that if you turn out to be let's say an arc vis artist so doing architectural visualization there will be a time where you can go out in the big world and go to a building a very big building probably you can go touch it and look up at at it, the skyscraper or whatever it might be, right? And you can actually talk and tell, tell yourself that, oh, I helped this building be here. This big, big physical thing wouldn't have existed unless I did that job. So you're part of something. And that's, you know, that's a rewarding thing. I think most people actually haven't been talking so much about within visualization that we shouldn't forget. Uh, so yeah, you can't look up your own name on IMDb, but you can go downtown and look at the huge skyscraper and, and look at it and think, oh, I actually did that to some degree, right? Obviously, engineers and, tech and architects and all of these are, are a big part of that as well. But you help visualize it, you help market it, or you help build it, basically. Um, I think that's, that's really important uh, to not forget that we're also part of that. You know, we get that kind of rewards as well. Stability and job security is a big thing for me and visualization as well. Um, usually for visualization artists, they get employed permanently and they don't have a contract that runs out. Um, obviously, there are jobs that have contracts that runs out, but it's more common to get a job as a full-time job. So you get stability. Um, you see a lot of visualization artists having families and kids and children and all of these things because they get job security. Whereas maybe in VFX and games and so on, it's a bit more common for people to have contracts at weeks or months, sometimes years, but let's just say months at a time, and then they need to go out and find a new contract. Where for visualization, that might not be, you know, that's not necessarily the case. It's more common to actually have a permanent contract. So it's a bit less chaotic. Um, we don't usually have crunch time in the same sense that you experience for the game communities, for example, or game industries. Um, there's obviously deadlines and they need to be held. And sometimes you need to work a little bit extra uh, to make sure that you meet your deadlines. But it's, it definitely helps for it to be less chaotic in that sense. It's more, I think there's more flow in it as a visualization artist. And feel free, some of you guys who worked within the industry, uh, you might have something to share and, and might not agree with all of these things, obviously. But again, there are obviously cases where this is not the case and all of these things. But I I feel like this is the most common thing that you would meet as a visualization artist and some of the benefits as to be working as a visualization artist. The downside might be that if you wish to be able to look on your own name on IMDb, um, well, you probably won't be part of that 
as being a visualization artist, unless you end up doing projects or jobs on the side, which is not usually visualization focused, usually. Cool. We have obviously a lot of different other courses as well. It's not just about visualization, but CG Spectrum actually offers a lot of different study areas like visual effects, 3D modeling, digital painting, game development, animation, and now, of course, as well, visualization. Uh, within these, you can get courses within like Houdini and new compositing, concept art, and digital illustration, I think, is actually... Uh, I think digital painting is our biggest um, study area where we have the most students, if I remember correctly. Um, so I will, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of interest in that as well. A lot of amazing students that I've seen uh, posting their work all the time. Uh, we have a lot in uh, game development, game design and programming as well as virtual production. Um, and again, animation, 2D, and both 3D animation. We have some great animators as well. Go to our website, cgspectrum.com. Check out all the mentors that we have. They're listed on the site as well. And you can read about all of these courses if you're interested in some of the other fields that we do as well, obviously. If you want to continue your learning journey, uh, you can do that with us. Um, if you want more information on visualization, we'll be following up by email. Uh, so if you all of you guys who have attended this um, live AMA, we will send you an email after this. Um, and we will be doing blog posts and we have a, I recorded a fireside chat slash, uh, podcast kind of style with, uh, actually my boss, which is, uh, Jeremy Chin, uh, where we talk about visualization and we will be releasing that to social media pretty soon, actually. So keep an eye out for that. We will be talking a lot about some of these things that I already covered here. Uh, but if you want to hear more, you can definitely go and check that out when we release it. So keep an eye out for it. Um, you can also, you know, explore more career options through cgspectrum.com slash career pathways. Um, we actually don't have visualization mentioned there, uh, yet it's still so new. So we haven't gotten to that yet on the webpage, but it will be added, uh, hopefully very soon. So you can read more about the different options for career pathways within visualization as well. Um, and if you feel like you're ready to take the next steps, we have a we offer a free month intro to 3D visualization courses, which is perfect for beginners. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, how these work in just a second. And if you're still unsure, you know, get on our webpage, chat with our admissions team. They're actually there to help. Um, or you can uh, type an email to hello at ctspectrum.com. And the email will be directed to all the relevant people. I might even be the one that it's directed to. And I'll try and help uh, answer all questions that uh, I might not have gotten to uh, during today as well. I will get to all the questions. There's a lot of you still asking, and that's great. Uh, so don't worry. I will get to those in a second. So our uh, 3D visualization courses. Uh, consists of a foundations, which is basically three terms. You can see them here at the bottom. Within those foundations, those three terms, the first term is what we consider the introduction to visualization, which is the first thing that we're offering. Um, we will be offering these in, in time. So if anyone starts on introduction now, which is, I think the first class is set to start in July 10th, if I remember correctly, so those who might sign up for introduction will be able to go directly into foundations of visualization as well without any breaks or anything going on. So you can actually right now, if you wanted to, you can sign up for the full nine months of foundations for visualization and it'll just keep going basically. So that's a great way for you to get into visualization, of course. And after that, after the nine months are done, uh, visualization specializations will be offered, which is our... Um, going into directly into like architectural visualization, uh, product visualization and industrial visualization, and even eventually other specializations as well. Uh, so all of these will be offered in time. Um, so you won't be, you know, you won't be forced to take any breaks or anything if you want to just continue empowering on with all of these things. Um, so yeah, that's going to be amazing. So let me just quickly talk a little bit about those first three terms that I mentioned in the foundations. The first one being the intro term, where we will be generally introducing you to 3D visualization. This will be introduction to something like modeling, lighting, rendering, 
fundamentals of materials and shaders, uh, understanding procedural textures, uh, texture projection methods, decals, and IPR rendering, as well as spines for architectural visualization specifically, uh, but also more concentrated as to just to use spines within 3ds max we will look at hard surface modeling uh, we will look at how to do block out and planning and general introduction to production workflows and and keep it concentrated a little bit about those workflows as well keep in mind the whole foundations terms the first three terms are meant to be focused around you guys being generalists um you will learn something that is relevant for ArcVis, you will learn something that is relevant for product vis and industrial vis, all of it at once within the foundations, but as a generalist. Then the idea is that if you want to really dive into ArcVis or whatever, um, you can take the specializations after that. And then there we will really go into it it's also in terms of programs offered and all of these things. Um, so that'll be more and more about these things uh, later on. Second term is more of the same, basically, but just, you know, adding to it again, V-Ray has already been covered here. I think we introduced, I introduced V-Ray in like the third lesson or something like that. So that's basically the third week. Um, and after that, we just power on with all of the great systems that we need to look into and, and stuff that we can use all the way into post-processing within the VFB itself in V-Ray and do even uh, render elements and uh, do back to beauty compositing and all of these things as well. The third term I think a lot of you guys would be excited for, and that's actually a term completely for Unreal Engine. So this will introduce you to all the same basics, basically, as you already covered in the first two terms, but we'll go into how to do all of these things in Unreal Engine. So obviously we don't need to learn to, un, you know, uh, to model and all of these things anymore. We already know that, but we need to then get you into the same thing, but within Unreal Engine and really using like Lumen and the Path Tracer and all of these great things that are within uh, Unreal Engine. So, and we will give you some tips and tricks on how to continue to develop your Unreal uh, Engine skills as well when the term is done. And then later on, it'll be offered within some of the specializations, depending on which you take and all of this as well. Um, so I'm really excited for the uh, Unreal part of this as well, uh, because I think there's a lot of hype going on about it. And a lot of the companies I've been talking to when we started the development of all of this are really interested in getting more employees who already know how to use Unreal Engine for uh, their visualization uh, projects. So I think that's going to be a really big seller for a lot of people when they need to go out and find a job as well. We have uh, already a bunch of mentors on our visualization team, all helping with development of the courses, both specializations and as our foundations as well. Uh, some of them are even here in the chat. I at least saw Teo is here somewhere. Uh, so he's one of our mentors and really great friend as well. Um, you, uh, The mentors will support you with live weekly calls when you start on our um, courses. So each course, each lesson within the courses are followed up with support from mentors weekly uh, with live sessions. We even can do uh, recorded video critiques of assignments as well. Um, and they can give you, you know, in industry insights based on real world studio experience because, you know, we kind of like our mentors to be people who know what the hell they're doing. Uh, and yeah, uh, you can see in chat, there's already a link to our mentors as well. So you can go read all about them and how amazing they all are and what they can do um and i'm really excited to this team that we've already built now and this team will only grow as you know as long as you guys keep getting people and and join our courses ourselves um the mentor team will grow with you basically and get larger and larger uh as we need more basically um so yeah they've all have a lot of experience working with big studios and doing big projects as well uh as well as actually having a great focus on uh, communities. Um, Theo, I told him, and we talked about this when he got on board as a mentor, is actually, I think the most exciting part about a, a guy like him is that he's doing, uh, he has a huge amount on focus uh, on, on community in general, and wanting to be able to help people connect and give them feedback and all of these things as well. So it's important for me that we don't just get mentors who have an impressive you know, CV or whatever, who's been working on, you know, some fancy project. I actually want people on board this team who care, who wants to 
help you guys. Um, a lot of these people like Teo that I mentioned earlier, he already did a lot of these feedback things basically for free within a lot of different communities earlier. And he still does, by the way. Um, and basically that's, that's the kind of drive. That's the kind of people I want on a team like this. I want to help, you know, educate the next generation of visualization um, students. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for you guys to meet those um, when you start, hopefully, on our courses. You can connect with us, obviously, on a lot of different things. We have cgspectrum.com. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. And you can always write to us directly on hello at cgspectrum.com if you want. You can also go directly to the CG Spectrum site. And from there, we have inquiry, an inquiry button where you can basically type in your name and your questions and whatever. Uh, and you can use that to sign up for our courses as well. And you will get you know, to talk to our admissions team. Uh, you can even get to talk to me if you want to and just ask your questions and uh, concerns or whatever it might be. And I'll, you know, we'll try and help you guys. So yeah, that basically concludes everything and, and gets us to the Q&A part of this, um, which is what I'm going to do now. So hopefully I haven't, you know, hopefully you're all still alive because um, it's just been me talking a lot, which is fine. Uh, I guess that's part of this. Um, so yeah. So one of you asked that, uh, what technical skills do you require to get into the 3D visualization field? And I think that's actually a great question because um, we do it's it's a lot of skills basically um there's a lot of technical skills that you need to get within 3d visualization however the idea with our course is that we teach you all of these so it's basically a good way for you to you know get introduced to all of this i think if i had to mention one of the most common skills within 3d that people get um which is actually not as useful in the long run would probably be modeling. You still model, but it's probably one of those things in for most visualization artists that they end up doing least. Um, if you had to focus on something on your own and, and you aren't going to take our courses, get good at composition and lighting. Those are the two main like things that you should really focus on. Uh, if you want to take just one course and do uh, something like uh, with lighting, especially, go look at what Nikas uh, has to offer. Um, his courses are amazing and are individual on that, uh, but are specialized within especially composition and lighting. Whereas, you know, what we offer here is the complete package is for you to get basically from nothing to a job. That is our, you know, our goal. Um, so if you only need a little bit, you know, some of the more specialized courses out there that are offered are probably, you know, the more correct way of doing something like that. But definitely, you know, we can also obviously help through our specializations and so on. Uh, but it'll be a, a little while before they are offered because first we're focusing on the intro and then foundations and then specializations. So. Another guy asks, or girl, sorry, another person asks if Corona is also going to be taught next to V-Ray and Unreal. And yes, it will. Um, we will be focusing on Corona specifically for, at least as it's planned right now, in the specialization courses for architectural visualization. So we won't be teaching, we probably won't be teaching Corona as part of the foundations course. We will be using V-Ray as the, um, way forward there. But the idea here is that if you can do V-Ray, you can kind of also do Corona. If we have taught you Corona to begin with, and then you needed to learn V-Ray, that's usually actually a lot harder for people because V-Ray seems to be a little bit more complex and a little bit more technical. So we're starting with the hard parts and then utilizing uh, Corona afterwards will be a breeze basically. Um, but we do definitely have uh, quite a few lessons with it. Uh, I know Teo is working on actually some of them uh, specifically as well for Aquis. Uh, so they will be offered uh, in the uh, specialization courses for Aquis. I hope that helps. So another uh, person asks, what is the job market like for an Aquis job or other kind of visualization gigs? And 
it, honestly, it's good. I mean, there's always a need for visualization artists out there. Um, there's so many different options because there's so many companies who could use, utilize a visualization artist, um, even if they don't already. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to find a studio that only has like that deals with visualization. You could also find a company that has products of any sort that could utilize the idea of having a visualization artist. Uh, and then who knows, maybe help them develop a department for visualization in the long run, help them with marketing or whatever it might be where it makes sense. There's so many great opportunities out there and there's a lot of diversity in those jobs as well. Um, so I definitely feel like visualization is one of the better industries currently to get into within 3D at least, um, where you have the most options. Um, again, if you if you're a good visualization artist, you can actually also use it as a stepping stone into some of the other industries because you already know how to do most things and you can you can make re photorealistic rendering. And you know, if you already know how to make a building look photorealistic, and you know, then you're already basically halfway there to do, you know, VFX where you have a shot within a city or whatever, and they need buildings and they need it to look like a realistic city. That's you know, visualization, but within VFX, basically. So you can really utilize visualization as a skill, as a core skill, even if you don't want to end up in visualization in itself. I think that's that's the beauty of visualization, for me at least. So that's a it's a nice stepping stone. And you can use that for game as well, um, utilizing something like Unreal Engine, for example, or a proprietary engine for that matter, which, you know, a lot of companies use as well. So I hope that helps. Um, <clears throat> some resources uh, and some advice for staying up to date on software and other advancements in the field. So this is hard, right? Because that's one of the problems. I mean, obviously, I'm not supposed to promote the idea of the fact that you can, I mean, YouTube is a great resource in itself, right? To get tutorials and, and learn how to use different programs and so on. And, and I think we all know it, right? You can, you could technically get whatever you need to know from scratch to becoming probably a great visualization artist or any type of 3D artist just by staying on YouTube. The problem is that if you had to figure all of that out on your own and figure out which tutorials, which YouTube channels are great and which of it is current information and good information, that's hard because you don't really know, especially if you're new. So, I mean, it's a kind of a cheesy answer, but the best way of of getting resources for staying up to date on software is to get an education within visualization in this case. Um, and, you know, taking ours is, is a good way of doing that. And that'll give you the tools and knowledge to be, you know, critical thinking to in the future when you're not part of CG Spectrum anymore, when you're on your own and you're done and you have a job probably, but then you know enough to know what is the next big thing because you already know what isn't, if that makes sense. So hopefully um, that can kind of help. But as a general resource um, for staying up to date, that can be hard because it's it's a lot of different resources basically on the internet. Um, YouTube is definitely one of them, but again, you 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 will figure out pretty soon that the problem is that you don't really know if the information you're getting is actually new. Um, even though the video of, of some random person who did a tutorial on something that looks cool, it might have been uploaded yesterday, but the information the person is conveying to you might be like five years old. It might be techniques that others have, you know, is feel like is, is in the stone age comparatively. Um, so that's, that's the hard part. Um, and you kind of need to get into the industry. So that's, that's why you should basically pay, take a paid, edu you know, education within your respective fields is to get the highway into getting into these things. Um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Teo says that YouTube is a hit or miss, um, and it can waste a lot of time and energy. Uh, I think we've all, a lot of us have been there, right? Even, even us that have, have been experts for God knows how long, um, that sometimes you end up watching a video and you're like, oh, I couldn't use this for anything. This, this doesn't, 
like this is just bad <laughs> and it's so hard to to know before you start it right is it more difficult to break into visualization industry due to the need to be a generalist and know a larger amount of skills i mean it might be there's a lot there's a there's a bit more technical things in the beginning and after that it becomes more of you know having a good eye for com uh, composition and lighting i feel like that's that's the core skills you actually need so if you if you were to consider yourself not as much as a generalist even though you probably need to but the the things that you need to be really good at the specialization for you should probably be composition and lighting those are key if you know what that means and and how to use utilize a good composition and good lighting then you're pretty good to go um all of the other things you don't necessarily need to be as good as um but they will come eventually so that's the you know that's that's the core of it and yeah nikos of course that's your passion in life that is for sure your passion <laughs> um so yeah get you know if you're good at composition and lighting then you're good to go basically um that's i will say that's the core of it um but there are definitely artists out there who are more technical minded and are better at other things and not as good as composition and lighting and they still get by they still do amazing things but they might struggle a little bit more on the simpler images and animations just because they you know they do that instead so yeah for sure so and yeah, Nikos, let's do a podcast together. I think that's a good idea, actually. Um, it's a really good topic uh, in itself to talk a little bit about, you know, what's the what should the focus be? So I'm 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 down for that. We can do that. Um, another one ask: I'm a complete beginner and don't have any experience with visualization or even 3D modeling. Is it realistic for me to take on to, uh, take the intro course, or should I learn some basics first on my own? Uh, so this is an amazing question because. You can definitely go into the intro course. That is the idea of how I developed or how we developed the intro course. And it's also actually my, ex my expertise from before. I You might have seen the beginning of this, um, this talk where I mentioned where I'm from. Uh, and I have over 10 years of experience of teaching um, students and, and some of them were kids, right? Really young people. And teaching them 3D from knowing nothing, like having zero experience. They're, the most experience they had was that they gamed or, you know, they've been doing Minecraft or Fortnite stuff or whatever it might be. And that was it. And we've had a lot of great success with that, actually. And, and I dig that people want to get into this business without any experience. And usually the most offerings has been for VFX or games. So that's why I wanted to start here. I wanted to give people an option to get into visualization without having to look at how to learn VFX and, and 3D, or sorry, game stuff to begin with. You can go directly into visualization through our intro course, and you definitely don't need any prior experience. You don't need to be able to draw. I can't draw for shit. Uh, you don't need to be able to do basically anything. We will teach you all of it. It might be a struggle, it might be hard, but it's designed for you to get introduced to all of these things. As long as you're willing to put in the effort and time, that's the only thing. Cool. All right, Kat says, 3D Vis sounds awesome, but what are some of the challenges you've seen working in the industry? So, okay, so this is a, this is a hard question, Kat. So I've... Actually, I mentioned earlier that there we are bound to release a podcast slash fireside chat, which is a video that we will be releasing soon on our social media. So keep an eye out for that, where I talk to Jeremy Chin about visualization. And actually, one of the subjects that we talk a little bit about is the, the challenges as well and some of our own experiences within that. So that might be of interest to you um, because I'm having a hard time coming up with a good example right now. Um, so you can get it through through that for sure. Um, I think the the challenges are, for me, the main challenge for most people would probably be the diversity of your job. Yet you need to be able to do a lot of different things, right? You need to get into 
all of these, you know, <laughs> you need to be good at a lot of different things and you need to have a clear head for that. Um, and planning, I think planning is underrated as well. You need to be good to, at planning. Um, so knowing how much time roughly it'll take you to do A, B or C, uh, that'll help you a lot in life and and make the challenges smaller um, and more overbearing, I say. So, yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, Anna asks, outside of technical skills, what would be a good skill for a free visualization artist to have to be successful? So, well, I, we already kind of covered this, right? So the most non-technical skill um, that I see as the most important one is um, composition, a good eye for composition. Uh, Theodore mentions endurance. Yeah, for sure. Um, endurance could definitely also be one of them. Um, having a good eye for color composition in general uh which is not necessarily technical there's technical approaches to composition but i think a lot of it's also a lot of you know it's about feel so these are definitely you know this this can help you to be successful um not to scare anyone off here but i feel like a pretty important soft skill um for a lot of people in visualization uh, to be successful, but not necessarily a re requirement for everyone, is to be able to talk to people, to be um, not necessarily an extrovert. Uh, you, I'm I'm very much an introvert myself, but to be able to communicate with a team uh, or a client or whatever it might be, and to be clear in your communication, so you so there there's not too many misunderstandings on what something is about, basically. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, Nico says, uh, business skills as well. That's a, that's a good answer. I feel like, um, that's, that can definitely be important as well. So you do, it's not uncommon for people within visualization, even though they're part of a team to actually have contact to the client themselves as well. Um, not everybody gets to do that, but if, if they want to, and, and a lot of companies actually have a, bo a more un informal way of working. So it's not as, as typically structured where there's a boss or a salesperson and he deals with the client only and all of these things. Um, this can, this can definitely be a bit of a, you know, that's a good skill to be good at. I I'd say that'll help you a lot but not necessarily a requirement for everybody. There's a there's a you know job place and an employer out there for everyone basically. Uh Amit asks what are your thoughts about Aquis future considering AI <laughs> in act now? How are the companies managing with this new development of AI? How far has visualization industry come as far as Aquis is considered? Are the old methods of painting, sketching still used and can uh, convince the clients instead of 3D images? Oh, I mean, this is a great question. I actually, you're giving me a, you're, you don't, I'm, I'm not even paying you and you're giving me a plug here because tomorrow, and I'm not even kidding, but tomorrow on our website, let's see here, I actually have the link. We have a panel discussion about AI within the creative industries. And I'm part of that panel discussion and we will be talking about AI within the 3D industries in general. Uh, and I'm obviously there as well. And I will be talking about AI in the sense of ArcVis and the future of ArcVis, considering how AI is. So you can get a lot more interesting um, answers from that and not just from what I can come up with here. Uh, so I feel like if you have the time, go and join us there tomorrow um, for that. Um, I think that will be uh, posted as well later on. So for those who are catching this uh, later as an as a recording, uh, I think the AI chat will also come on later on as a recording. I hope at least. So you might be able to catch it there. Um, the AI talk is a really long talk. I'm not really going to go into too much into it here. Basically, I'm not worried. I think AI is a great tool in many ways, um, but that needs a lot of elaboration for to understand what exactly I mean with that. Um, but keep in mind that a lot of the tools that you use, if you use, I mean, if you use V-Ray, um, I don't know if you do, or even Corona Renderer for that matter. I think they both have it actually. Um, don't you use a denoiser sometimes? Have you used NVIDIA's denoiser within V-Ray, for example? 
that's an AI denoiser. And I mean, that's a great tool, right? I mean, that's a tool we've been using for a while now. And if you think about it, if you use a denoiser like NVIDIA's AI denoiser, then technically you might be rendering, let's just say 50% of your image. The rest of it is pure noise. So the AI is generating 50% of all your images. I think that's a pretty interesting thought process. You're actually not doing that part. The AI is doing that for you. Um, and you could theoretically think about that in the same sense that some people have raised concerns with you know, mid-journey and all of that as well. Um, and stable diffusion, whatever they're all called, right? Um, so I think AI is definitely a, a, a great thing for us, for tools, but it can obviously be overdone. And since it's a new thing, people will overdo it to begin with. We need to figure out where it makes sense and how it makes sense for us in our different workflows, uh, but it's not going to replace anyone. That's not how I feel like. I saw a presentation on AI and how AI could help you uh, populate scenes, basically. And that's a long time ago they showed that. And it was great. And there was a lot of concern back then as well that, oh, will this replace us? And well, no, that wasn't the idea. The idea was to shift whatever your focus should be. Um, instead of using time on technical stuff, on populating a scene, instead you should focus on about, you know, what it should be populated about and not actually doing it. Stuff like that. I think that's great. Cool. Do you work more alone as a 3D Vis artist because you're a journalist since you're not working so much to get little like artists in animation or VFX? The teams are definitely smaller. Let's put it like that. You can definitely have a very small company of just you know one person if you want, um, but you can also be part of smaller companies where there are maybe you know one, two, three, four, maybe twenty or thirty uh, peers employed at the same time doing basically the same style of things. There's a lot of bigger companies out there that have hundreds uh, on their team working with visualization in any way or form. And some of them might be a little bit specialized, but they're all they all started as generalists for, for sure, um, usually at least. So you would, you know, yes, the teams are smaller, but they're not necessarily, you're not necessarily alone. Uh, you can choose to go that route. You can choose to become a, a freelancer on your own, um, but you're more likely to be more alone on the individual project itself. So you might need to, you know, but you will have colleagues. You will have people who can who can help you with all of these things and talk to you about, you know, how you can solve a y uh, x y and z or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, you're a little bit more alone, I think, on on some of the cases, but. You know, sometimes you need to do different areas if it's a bigger area that you're visualizing, but you're doing all of the things within your area. Instead of just modeling everything, you're, you know, you have a an area on a um on a plate or whatever where you need to do like four of the buildings and all of the texturing and all of the things within those buildings. And then there might be a different place in the same scene where there's three other buildings and you, that another person does all of those things basically. So the, in that sense, you're a little bit more on your own, um, but you can definitely help each other. And again, we have a lovely community in visualization. So you're never really alone if that's how you think about it. Given the overlapping between uh, ArcVis, industrial visualization and digital fashion, for example, is it possible to switch between the courses in a later phase? Yes, for the specialization things, it's actually going to be possible. I think the idea is that it's going to be possible to basically think of the specializations as in when you have the art viz, product viz, industrial visualization, specializations. Think of those as packages. Uh, I think the current time for them, the time frame for them is that they're going to be uh, two terms long, basically. So six months. Um, but they actually consist of individual, like four different subjects that are, uh, I think, three months for every subject. So let's just call it uh, ArcVis 1, 2, 3, and 4. But technically, I think we're doing it so that you can you don't necessarily need to take our package that we've collected for you. If you think there's one of the subjects that are more interesting within product visualization, you can actually take 
let's say ArcVis 1, ProductVis 2 and 3, and then Industrial Visualization 4. And that's your two terms. So you can mix and max, uh, mix and match as you want. Um, it might not be the same price in, at the end of it, but it won't be too much of a difference if I remember correctly. Uh, please don't quote me too much for that. Um, but that's how I remember it at least. And it might change a little bit because it's still a little bit in the future currently and in development. So we might change some of these things. Uh, but at least that's the plan for now um, that you can kind of feel like you're in a candy store and just point in, in whatever subjects you think are cool and you know basically make up your own education purely on that. The only part of it which I'm expecting not to be as much you can choose is that you mentioned digital fashion and digital fashion does not have as much overlap in as some of the others. There will be parts of what we also do in digital fashion within ArcVis and product visualization and so on, but digital fashion might be a, a study area in its own. It might be a little bit its own course, basically. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens when we really get to dive into it um, before we can answer that clearly. I hope that helps. All right, there's still quite a lot of questions. I'm trying to get through all of them as fast as I can here. What's the career growth look like for Freedivis? Like an illustrator might become a creative director. Where does Freedivis take you? Uh, thank you for everything and very interesting presentation. Well, I, I thank you. So that's actually an interesting question. Uh, I think we haven't covered it too much, but there's a lot of growth usually because the interesting part for me is that visualization actually doesn't use um, as commonly, we don't use as many um, titles. So you don't usually, a person's title within visualization could be uh, 3D visualization or 3D vis artist or whatever they call it. It's actually a little bit different from company to company, what they call it. Uh, whereas in, in VFX, we have like a TD and a lead and a senior and junior and all of these things. And some VFX, com uh, sorry, some visualization companies has taken these titles to them and, and use them. And that means that usually with the title comes a certain amount of responsibility. And that makes it a little bit clear what, you know, um, what kind of, 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 of growth, career growth you can do. Um, where in visualization, you don't necessarily change your title, um, but there are definitely different amounts of responsibility that you can have, how many clients you deal with, or take on clients on your own. Maybe you start a small team within the company that deals specifically with a specific amount of clients or a specific type of clients, and that can give you more respons responsibility and thus giving you career growth in terms of getting more uh, things to do. And usually a pay raise could follow with that as well. Um, some might use leads in as a, as a title, um, but it's not as commonly found as it is for VFX and game. Um, there's definitely a lot of career growth opportunity. It's just not as visible in the same sense because people usually just have the same title all the time sometimes they get them they give a new title they, so you can be creative director or whatever it might be right uh but that's very individual for company to company um so yeah is Frigius Max a compulsory software for professional visualization or can or we can also invest time in software like blender for visualization so that's a good great question you can definitely use Blender for visualization. Uh, Blender is a great tool, but for me, Blender is definitely a tool. It is where FreeDS Max is a lot more the primary. So Blender is just a tool in my tool bag, whereas FreeDS Max is as well, but it's usually where I end up, um, mostly because of V-Ray. Uh, V-Ray is directly developed for FreeDS Max as the primary program. Uh, you can get V-Ray for Maya and for Cinema 4D. And I think they even have mentioned that it might come out to Blender as well at some point. But Max will always be the primary software for it. Uh, so the nearest features, the nearest whatever will always be there for something like V-Ray. The problem with, well, the, let's turn around. You can basically use any type of 3D software for visualization. They're all very equal in many ways, and they all do the same thing. But 
there might Fridius Max's core um I mean thing to do the 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 thing that it's actually really really good at is managing large scale files especially BIMs or BIMs um if you ever gotten a file from in an architect like cat files or something like that uh dvg files or whatever it might be and you had to import them into any type of software is if they're huge you would hope and pray that you're using 3ds max because almost every other software like blender maya whatever they all struggle a lot <laughs> when it comes to huge files like that uh, and that's actually one of the biggest forces of, of 3ds max um, and one of the reasons i think it it became and stayed the uh, main software for most companies for visualization it's not the only one out there. I know a few that uses Cinema 4D. Uh, I even know someone that uses uh, Modo as their primary software. I don't know why. That's actually a bit of a weird choice. But um, you can get started with something like Blender. But you would probably the I think the highest chance is that you would meet someone with 3ds Max. That would probably be the most common used. At least that's what we're experiencing when talking to the companies. I hope that helps. Um, do, 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 do. Amit ask again about the AI, how far the vision come as far as ACV is considered, are we, oh yeah, so the old methods in terms of, um, uh, sorry, can we just sketching, I don't think that many, um, uses sketches and so on for, uh, visualization anymore, I think most, do um most of following the trends of what is more current now if i had to do something sketch wise for a client i would use block outs i would use you know i would do it in 3d because it needs to end there anyway probably unless i had someone on my team who were really great at, at drawing which i'm not um then we could maybe use a concept artist of some sort and and do use that as part of it but mood boards and even ai generated images to become a part of a mood board could be a great way to to utilize something new uh just to bring the ai thing back in it um but it wouldn't be like the end result that you would give the client it would be something that you could show the client as as a way of directing the client or yourself into whatever this project needs to end at but it's not it's not the final thing that you then send them an invoice for at least not in my head um but there might be someone out there who who does it a bit different um so all right so here's so I maybe a silly question but I want to make sure I got it right so an absolute beginner can take the whole course and by the end of it be an industry standard professional but an artist who is already doing 3D visualization can also attend by skipping the intro course and directly going for the more advanced ones. Yes, that's actually not, um, that is actually true. So the idea is that the intro, the absolute intro, the first term of our foundations is designed for people who don't know 3D at all. So there's more introduction to how 3DS Max works uh, and how V-Ray works and all of those things. Whereas the second term of our foundations goes more into, well, now we just need to work more. Now we need to learn more technical things. Um, so the idea is that you technically can skip the intro course. For most people, if they don't have any experience with Max or V-Ray, I probably wouldn't allow them to skip the intro course because we cover a lot of those things and that would be hard. But if you already know quite a bit, um, you can definitely just uh, go to our web page and, and apply to our courses and wish to tell them tell our admissions team that you wish to skip the intro course and you will be probably booked for either a review session or a portfolio review or whatever we might deem necessary to guide you specifically if you can take if you could skip if we would let you skip the intro course or not basically it's not as much about if i mean at the end of it why would i care if you took the intro or not if you just wanted to skip it and still get, pay us for a course but i want to make sure that you get the best possible experience as well right so if if you're if your 
th thought that, oh, I think I need to skip the intro course. And when I look at what you can do and I'm, you know, and I value that, oh, you definitely need to take the intro course. I would definitely s tell you that and, and kind of require you to do that because you wouldn't get a good experience if you missed out on core things that I can see that you might be missing. Um, but both are definitely possible. So if you're already great at 3D or can do a lot of things and it makes sense, then definitely we wouldn't we wouldn't try and sell you the intro course. We would try and sell you the second term instead and go from there and then continue. Um, so we we take that pretty seriously because you know we don't want to waste anybody's time as well. Uh, we want everybody to have as good a time as possible with our courses, obviously. Uh, someone here is thinking of enrolling in 3D modeling class. Is their introductory class enough for me to land a job after? Um, so in the 3D modeling class, uh, I have no idea what exactly is, how much and so on. So if it's specifically for the 3D modeling, I would ask you to go to our webpage and inquire and talk to our admissions team and they will help you. Or you can write an email to hello at ccspectrum.com and they can uh, look into your question and make sure that you get a proper answer instead. If you meant the um, intro course, for example, for visualization, I would say that no, it's definitely not enough to land a job after just the intro course. You would usually need more than just an intro course. And I'm Pretty sure that might also be true for the 3D modeling class, um, but it depends on what kind of job you want to go after. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of jobs out there and who knows, you might be lucky. It depends on how much time you devote to it afterwards as well. If you took the intro and that's enough to get on your own feet and just go from there, I mean, you might not be job ready right after, but you might be able to get at a level that could make you job ready after, I don't know, half a year or a year on your own. Who knows? Um, but it's definitely faster and easier to just take, a, you know, the full courses. Um, but, you know, that's an easy answer, I guess. I hope it helps. And can we expect a good opportunity for visualization for third world countries like India? There's a lot of visualization going on in India. Um, I think that's a good, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've had... I've worked for a few companies that had um, departments in India or around India. I think one of them wasn't actually India. I think one of them was Vietnam or something like that. Um, I definitely think that there's a future for that as well. India is, has some great uh, artists doing VFX already. And, you know, visualization isn't necessarily that far off that as well. So there's definitely opportunities for going into visualization through something like that. And maybe even for companies who wish to outsource um, their visualization jobs or whatever that might be as well. Um, and again, you know, starting with visualization, you're a generalist. So if it doesn't work out too much, you can always jump into VFX or game uh, because it's, you know, you already have most of the skills needed. You just need to specialize a little bit more after it. So that might be better. I hope that helps. Um, so yeah, the last question is a little bit about any thoughts on Previs versus ArcVis. And I mean, Previs is always great. Use it to, um, you can use it to get an idea of what the, what an actual client needs. So you're not using too much time on your, um, um, you're not sp spending too much time on, on something that a client does, isn't interested in. So you're not wasting it. Um, but yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, previous is, is great. And, and it's, I mean, it, you use it more usually within VFX uh, and game, but you could use it as a sketch uh, here instead if you wanted to. Um, but it depends on the job, I think. It's it's very different from uh, depending on the client, basically. So yeah. Anyway, thank you guys, everyone, for joining uh, for this live AMA session and everything. It's been nice to talk to you. I uh, hope I haven't talked all of your ears off or anything. I hope to see some of you enroll into our courses, or if you still have any questions, you know, reach out to me uh, through our website, go send an email to hello at cgspectrum.com. Um, obviously share this video as long as when it comes out um, to everyone that you might know who might be interested in visualization. Hopefully all of these questions 
that you've uh, asked helps people to get a better idea of what visualization is. And, you know, we all have a bit of a responsibility on getting our our own little visualization community to grow even bigger. Um, so I feel like we should uh, we should help people get into it easier. And that's, you know, this is one of the ways they can do that. So, all right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I will see you hopefully soon. Maybe even at the AI talk tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs>